Okay, what we have here is an original, unmolested, untouched, for 38 years, a Wells Gardner K4900 out of a Dragon's Lair. Uh, this is out of our machine at the arcade, and it just completely, totally died. Dead. Worked fine the other day. Today, turn it on. Nothing. And I say original because it was it's never been removed from the original picture tube. I had to break the, the uh, putty here that holds the neck board on, so... No one has ever, I'm the first person to remove this since it went in 38 years ago. And like I say, it's totally dead. So I turned the machine on, nothing happened. And going through and looking at it, the fuse is actually good. First thing I tested, of course, was the fuse um, over here, this guy. And then I looked it over for any bird marks, scorch marks, any arcing from the flyback, any cracks, blown caps, nothing. Uh, the underside of the board was pristine. No char marks, nothing exploded. There's nothing cracked on the flyback. It's completely intact. There are no bulging caps. They're all original. I don't see anything visibly wrong with it uh, under normal circumstances. So, knowing what I know about these and having dealt with this, I think, probably about a dozen times, I'm going to show you the very common fault that can cause this. So, in this instance, this chassis is completely, totally dead, but there's nothing wrong with it. Visually, anyway, the, there's no bulging caps or blown fly, flyback or scorch marks or burns or fuses intact. Everything is visually okay. So it's kind of a head scratcher when you deal with this because you think, okay, is it a caps or flyback or you know cold solder joint? Uh, and it turns out that it actually is a cold solder joint. So let me show you exactly what's going on with these. This is a very common problem with these 4900s, and every one that I've ever worked on, if it didn't have this problem, I, I went ahead and preemptively repaired it so it didn't happen in the future. And what that is, is there is a cold solder joint that develops off of the voltage regulator. The STR381 over here is your voltage regulator. And this over here, the DB3, uh, I'm sorry, DB98 Bravo is your HOT. Uh, so over here off the voltage regulator, if we zoom in here, you can follow the pathway on pin number two. You can follow this trace. It goes up this way, goes across this jumper, goes up this way, and da da da, right there. Uh, I may be at the limit of the capacity of this camera. But as you can see, that solder joint is cracked and broken. Extremely very common issue. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to do cap kits and flybacks and repairs on these 4900s and I go to inspect this and it's either on the verge of cracking or cracked already. Uh, this one has gotten to the point to where it's so cracked that it doesn't even allow the voltage from the regulator to pass through over across the jumper. So I wish I could get in a bit closer on that but you can definitely see that that is cracked. And yep if that's the case the chassis will be completely dead you won't have any signs of life, it will uh, do nothing. It's like having your voltage regulator removed. So, yeah, uh, let's see if I can get closer, maybe. Oh, uh, no, it won't let me. Uh, will it focus at all? No. That's as close as I can get for you. But you can see there, yep, that's the main cause. So, I'm going to reflow that and then we'll test it. Uh, I don't know if this will work outside of the Dragon's Lair because it's got the NTSC connection here. Uh, this connector here plugs into the NTSC in, uh, board and then the NTSC board has the output that goes to the chassis. So I don't know if I can get this to actually test, but, but I'm not uh, as far as video signal, but actually I'm not really worried about that. I just want to see if it powers on. So yeah, this was completely dead, no signs of life, nothing. Let's reflow this joint. And we'll see what happens. So yeah, if you ever get one of these and it's totally dead, check that joint. If it even if it does work and you're doing your regular repairs and cap kits and whatnot, uh, always always inspect this jumper here because I'd say probably 75% of the time it's either cracked uh, or about to crack. So that's a little uh, pearl of wisdom I wanted to share since I have to do this here. So let's turn the iron on and I'll pause here while I'm waiting for it to heat up here. Give me a second. Well, I just noticed here uh, the corner of the chassis is busted off, but it's not a big deal. This is all just one big ground plane. 
Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Don't know how that happened since it's never been removed from the chassis, but um, yeah, I can't say. Maybe it just over time fell off. I can't say. But uh, So I'm going to use my fiberglass pin here and just kind of clean this joint up a bit before we um, try and solder to it. Get the oxidation off of it. That's not bad. And you can really see how cracked it is now. So let's get our solder. And let's reflow this. Boom. There you go. Beautiful. I always like to clean those pads off with the, the uh, fiberglass pen to get rid of the oxidation so the solder sticks better. Otherwise it kind of will um, glob on you, if you will. So, alright. There we have it. Um, I'm going to do some inspecting, make sure there's no other cold joints or anything. And then we will power it on and see if it works. Like I say, I'm not too worried about a video signal because uh, it was working just fine, except that then it lost power, of course, because of this. But uh, it is all original caps, so I probably will go ahead and do a cap kit while I have it out of the machine. And I'll do that later. It's not a, the subject of this video. So let's just get it on a tube. Oh, that's bent over. That's better. All right. So let's just get it on a tube and see if it even fires up now. So I'm confident that it will. Uh, so let me cut away here. We'll get it on the tube, fire it up, hopefully, and we'll see if that solved the problem. All right, before we actually get this tested, I want to show you, make a point here, that this little uh, holder here for the, the chassis actually lines up right with that white line and right over that jumper. So the reason this happens is because that jumper is cradled inside of this white nylon holder piece. So when you actually install this, it sits inside... It sits inside there like, uh, well, it's going to be hard to do here. There we go. It uh, sits inside there and kind of holds it in place. So that is the kind of the reason and the cause behind this, this issue on these uh, chassis. So let me finish uh, getting this installed and then we'll fire it up. Well, all right, we're all hooked up. Uh, this is not the original tube from the Dragon's Lair or the original tube from this chassis. Uh, this is the only tube I have that's really compatible with the version of K7400 with the vertical mod here, this um, vertical position mod. Now, not every case, not every 4900 is made equal. The ones that have the vertical position mod need a special yoke. Um, I can't go into that detail now, but if, if you got one that has the vertical position mod, you need a specific tube that will support that. Otherwise, you kind of run into linearity issues. Uh, it'll work, but you may not be able to stretch the image or move it in the right spot. So uh, there's, you know, um, different versions of the 4900 that require different tubes. So that's a, a subject for another time. But for now, let's turn it on. I do have a video signal fed to it from the NBA Jamboard here on the test rig just to see if it'll give me an image. I don't know, but we're just concerned on whether or not it actually powers up now. So I haven't done anything to it uh, other than fixing that solder joint and before it was completely dead. So let's see if it turns on. Here we go. One, two, three. It does turn on. Easy, quick fix. Let's see if we have... Oh! What do you know? Ah, uh, it's shaking a bit. Uh, let's... I don't know if... Well, there, it settled down. Oh, there it goes. I need to do a cap kit on it. Uh, like I say, the caps are all original. This may be because I have my fan going. Let me turn the fan off. There it settled down. Well, there you go. Um, yep. Success. So if you have a 4900 that's completely, totally, utterly dead, no signs of life, and no obvious errors with uh, blown components or charred marks or anything with, you know, cracked flybacks, arcing, check that solder joint because I'll bet you it's bad. Hopefully this helped you out, and we will see you on the next repair.